Pocatino, and my presentation is on endpoint protection. A um, little, little background about me, I am a security analyst for CBI. Um, I am actually one of the newbies here today, this is my first conference. Woo! So, thank you, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully I don't bore you too much, I know we just had lunch, so I'll try not to put anybody to sleep here. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about endpoint protection now. Was anybody here for John's talk about DLP just before lunch? So, you know, he kind of talked about endpoint protection a little, especially if you don't set it up right, it can create some havoc, uh, which I will get into in a little bit later. But let's go ahead and talk about endpoint protection first. Pass up toward the mic. <laughs> can you hear me now? A little better? Okay. Can I get closer? Yes, I could get closer. Um, so there are many, there are quite a bit of different brands out there for endpoint protection. Um, I personally use Semantic. It's a very good product. Um, there's also Kaspersky, uh, Sophos, and McAfee. Um, what endpoint protection is, is it's a way to help secure your network, specifically um, protecting your endpoints, so your PCs, Macs, uh, bring your own devices, servers, point of sale systems and even windows embedded now when you go to install endpoint protection it can either be set up in a virtual machine or on a physical computer and then once you start getting installed you can set up different policies for it um, white and black listing so if you have any specific kind of programs especially um, proprietary software that you use you can make sure that you set it up properly so it's not blocking anything that you may need to use on a regular basis. Now like I said, I, I use Semantic Endpoint Protection and for them they have a five-layered protection so uh, they have your, your firewall and intrusion protection um, for your reputation. It just goes through different files and websites to make sure that they're legitimate sites and don't have any kind of um, malicious activity for them. Uh, your file, so your antivirus, where it'll go through and scan. Now, I remember when, when I was a little younger, antivirus used to be really slow and you just bog down your computer and a real pain. Um, the nice thing about endpoint protection now is that it's not so, it doesn't bog down the computer as much as it used to. It's very quick, uh, runs silently in the background, so you can actually set up policies to have it run and it won't cause a lot of issues for workers while they're trying to do their day-to-day -day, day -day work. Uh, the behavior aspect, what it does is it monitors and blocks suspicious programs. So say you download a, a program that could have some malicious code in it, uh, what the behavior will do is make sure that it, it checks and blocks you from actually downloading it to keep your system safe. As for the repair, um, what Semantic calls it is a power eraser. So if you have any kind of malicious code on your computer that's really tough to get off, this will go through and just wipe your hard drive completely to make sure it gets off, gets it off the system. Um, one of the other nice things and I think John talked about this too, is location awareness. Um, you can actually set up different policies for users that are specifically in-house or if they travel a lot. Um, so for instance, if, if someone stays more on the company network, you can create policies that are less restrictive for them so they can do a little bit more and not have to worry about being completely locked down. Whereas, say you got someone that travels quite a bit, uh, you can actually write up the policies and make sure that, you know, they're not going out trying to find websites that are, websites that are not supposed to go to. And it also makes it a little harder for someone to try and um, break their way into their system as well. So let's talk a little bit about the bad that kind of happens now. For this slide, what I want to do is kind of show different aspects of how 
endpoint protection wouldn't have worked. Um, we've heard of things like Ashley Madison, you know, Sony and the director getting hacked. Um, the reason that, you know, we can't rely on endpoint protection helping with this is because there was, you can look at different things like faulty code, um, people being able to backdoor their way in. Now, as I mentioned, John had talked about how if you don't set up endpoint protection properly, it can create havoc, which is true. Um, I actually was at my fiance's Chris, company Christmas party recently, and I was talking to her manager's husband about how he does not approve of endpoint protection because how his company set up their security is they completely lock them down. Now, sometimes we can think of this as a good thing, but the way they completely locked everything down is they didn't even make sure that any proprietary software they use uh, was able to be used on a regular basis, which can cause some issues when you're going to a client trying to sell a product. You know, if you can't get your stuff to work, what's the point of having the security if, you know, you can't make the money with clients? So, now, I know there's quite a bit of bad, but we should talk about the good. And I really like this picture because, for me, when I first saw this, you know, I always used to think security was always that big guy that had, you know, all the different weapons, trying to make things secure. But it really is coming down to, you know, cybersecurity professionals making sure that we're doing the right thing to help protect our clients and our own systems. Now, has anybody here uh, heard of YFATCH? Okay. Um, a couple of my coworkers and I have actually did a project on this where we did some research on what YFATCH was and, um, you know, what it does to the systems. We actually found out it's, I know this kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but it's good malware. So what it'll do is it'll infect the system and close down the Telnet port. And then from there, what it does is removes any malicious programs that are on systems. Um, we'll go through credentials, seeing if users have strong passwords, anything like that. Um, if you don't, it'll actually send you a message saying, hey, you've been hacked, you know, your credentials are kind of weak, you need to strengthen them a little. Um, and it also kind of helps create stronger firewall policies. Another thing we're starting to see, too, is companies actually taking that stance of being more secure and not letting their data just be leaked or, you know, getting getting intruded. Um, I actually worked on, I shadowed Sean Bertrand uh, for an engagement that we did, and it was really great because Sean is the kind of guy that will, um, instead of just setting up the software, he will actually have the client run through so that we're actually teaching them to, you know, know from start to finish, this is how you set up the product, this is how it works, these are the policies that you can set up. And while, you know, while on that engagement, he also introduced something that I've never kind of seen before is the host integrity policy, where when you set it up, it'll actually check a system to make sure that it's up to date. If the system's not up to date, what it'll do is keep block it from going onto the company's network until that user like updates their does their Windows updates, make sure their credentials are strong, and then once they make sure everything's up to date, it'll actually let them on the network. Um, another thing too, the uh, device and application control. One of the things that you know, at least I see around work every day, is some of the guys will try and play a little trick, they'll drop a USB, you know, cause some kind of havoc. Not Nothing bad, but enough to get you, your interest going. That's one of the nice things about endpoint protection is you can set up policies to make sure that, you know, if you got a user that's curious all the time about just plugging in a USB and seeing what's on it, it actually keeps them from doing that so you don't, you know, plug in a USB that might have a, a Trojan on it that runs once you plug it in. So, 
those are some of the good things that you know endpoint protection is starting to go to and help our help users out to make sure they're more secure. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I apologize, guys. That was really quick. Like I said, this is my first one, so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Are there any questions or? I'll be honest, the only time I've used it was for Windows based. I haven't tried it on Linux yet. Um, I am curious to try it, see um, how it works, but as far as I know, um, it can be used on Linux-based systems, but like I said, I just haven't used it yet. Not yet. Um, I know that, I mean, you, you are right, I, I would have to say, and I apologize, I don't know more, but I'm still learning a lot more about it, and I know it's one of those softwares that you can add on to, like a security suite to help protect more. I don't know if that's really answering your question or not, but...
Right. Right. All right, any other, any other questions or? All right, well, thank you guys for letting me talk to you today, and um, hopefully I didn't do too bad. So um, thanks again, and have a good rest of the day.